All right, so I finally got this thing to a point where I'm ready to show it off. This is my handheld PC, Linux computer, um, based on the Raspberry Pi. And it's got uh, an RTL SDR, so a software defined radio integrated into it. That's what this antenna is. See, sticking out the top. I'll pull that off for now. Cute little red cap on there to match the mouse joystick. The mouse joystick is from uh, PSP uh, 1000. Pretty easy to find online. Uh, the faceplate is made out of a material called Richlite. It's a phenolic material. Um, backside is Sapile, a hardwood with a bronze heat sink. Um, the end cap and the side cap are just really thin aluminum. Um, the mouse, uh, the keyboard and the mouse keys are custom, um, panel, which sits on top of custom PCBs. Uh, if we take a step back and look at another faceplate here, we can see this pocket in the top. And so that's what this um, keypad sits on. And so all I've done here is basically tab each key into this piece of Gravitech material. Um, it's made specifically for engraving. So um, the top is just a thin sheet of this faux aluminum that I engraved down through to make the uh, key labels and then removed um, all the black regions so that the keys are actually um, proud of that surface. So that keypad sits in this um, little pocket here, same with the mouse um, keypad. On the back there's another pocket into which the custom PCB goes. So I built this in KiCad. These are Panasonic uh, 1.3 Newton switches. Um, they're pretty quiet, much less so when I have them in the actual um, um, assembly. Um, definitely some, some ringing going on there. Um, I'll probably try to dampen that with some foam inside. Uh, this uh, PCB is based on the Atmega 32U4. And I'm using QMK on there. As you can see, my fancy little uh, screen printing there. Um, this is also handling the analog input from the... Uh, joystick. So um, I've broken those out at the top, um, those pins, for the microcontroller. Uh, and then that just is a USB um, human input device that goes to the, um, the main board. Uh, the Raspberry Pi board was modified. You can see here there's a double stack of USBs that are normally in this area where the power button now lives. I had to desolder those and I used one of the USBs for the keyboard and one for the uh, SDR. And uh, you can see here this thing is uh, overheating like crazy. I pulled up the full... <laughs> Uh, assembly of the computer itself in FreeCAD and it's just really hating that. So there are plans in the future to build a um, uh, basically a plenum that goes on top of this heat sink that'll be a little, a little pancake fan or whatever those are called. Um, I'm gonna start opening this up to show off the inside. Um, this was a pretty wild uh, <laughs> process to get these parts 
uh, of course, to fit together nicely, but also the choice of materials made it pretty complicated. For example, um, using sapile, machining wood is pretty challenging. Um, there's a couple tricks that can make life easier there. For example, uh, controlling the uh, direction of your cutter relative to the material. So always climb cutting uh, helps to prevent tear out. It's not always possible to um, prevent all tear out, but it's uh, better, better than the alternative. All right, so this is a WaveShare DSI display. Uh, it will eventually be fastened to the faceplate there. Raspberry Pi, software-defined radio, wave share, uh, power supply. Um, that's what this jack is for on the side to charge that uh, three 18650 cell bank. Uh, it charges with 12 volts, which is, you know, kind of different than what everybody wants, like a charge over USB, but at least it's the same voltage as like a vehicle. So you could do a 12 volt port charging there. Uh, this has kind of made my life a little bit easier. Um, keeping an actual micro USB jack internally. So this has made programming a lot easier when I have to uh, I've been programming on a different computer, um, the firmware for the board, so being able to just plug right into a, a normal jack has been kind of convenient. Uh, what else to say in here? Uh, probably a little bit of cleanup to do eventually. Um, be making another one of these down the road. Hopefully I can make a couple improvements. Um, if I were to make a major revision to this assembly, I would try to leave room for a camera. There's probably almost room for a camera in this center region. Kind of an awkward place to put one, but physically I think it would fit. Um, maybe a small GPS chip uh, could go in there. Uh, and down the road, maybe like a 4G cell modem or something like that. Um, yeah, there's no more <laughs> USB ports available without going to an internal hub, so um, we have to find room for that for any, um, any USB components that you tried to stuff in here. So, not necessarily an expandable design, but hopefully one that comes across... You know, it's kind of a little bit different, maybe a little more elegant than something that would be, say, 3D printed. Um, but, you know, thanks for taking a look. I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Uh, I'll probably be doing another update on this once I make a couple changes. Yeah, I'm just happy to be getting it to a point where it's ready to show off. Okay, thanks for watching.